Hello, hi, I'm Rasmus Båt, and this is a presentation that I presented at the base at Lund uh, 2023 conference. Uh, it's a conference I actually was part of starting back in 2014, a tiny conference, uh, just like local to the Lund University in Sweden. Um, the reason we started this conference was partly because we really like Bayesian methods and thought more people should uh, uh, know about them. Uh, but another reason that we started the conference was that we were pretty annoyed that null hypothesis, significance testing, and um, p-values were, were so prevalent in, in teaching statistics all across the university. Uh, so for this presentation, I, I indulged uh, a bit and uh, went back to the roots of this uh, mini-conference centered on Bayesian statistics uh, and did some good, honest um, p-value bashing. So the question is, can AI save us from the perils of p-values? Uh, spoiler alert, uh, no, uh, but we'll, we get to that. So p-value bashing, yes. Uh, many people has written about the many, many problems with p-values. Some people have even written whole books about it, such as this, this awesome books, book by uh, Aubrey Clayton. Uh, however, one of my favorite uh, small articles uh, uh, centered around one specific problem with p-values is this article by Haller and Krauss. Uh, so it, it centers, uh, it focuses on the problem with p-values that they are so hard to get right and so easy to misinterpret, even for people that should know better. Uh, its, uh, its name is Misinterpretations of Significance a problem students share with their teachers? Spoiler alert, uh, yes, uh, but we get to that. So what Haller and Klaus, Klaus did was that they uh, put together a small survey that they distributed around their university uh, and the, the survey or questionnaire uh, had the following uh, premise. So the premise was that um, you, you've done an experiment, uh, an experimental group, a control group, and then you analyze this, uh, this result uh, with a t-test and you get a p-value of 0.01. So given this stated premise, uh, which of the following uh, uh, statements uh, follow from this premise? So which of these statements are true or which of these statements are, are not automatically true given this premise uh, and a p-value of 0.01. So is it the case that you have absolutely now disproven the null hypothesis given a p-value of 0.01? No, of course, that's that's not the case. Is it the case that you found the probability of the null hypothesis being true? Maybe is it 0.01? No, no, it's not. That's not what the p-value mean. Uh, is it the case that you've absolutely proven your experimental hypothesis? No, for sure not. Can you deduce the probability of the experimental hypothesis being true? No, but you know maybe now if you decide to reject the null hypothesis, the probability that you're making the wrong decision. No, because you're not considering the base rate, so you don't know this. Uh, but is it the case that you have a reliable experimental finding in the sense that if hypothetical, the experiment was repeated a great number of times, you would obtain a significant result on 99% of occasions? This statement is actually also false. So all of these statements were false and the only way you could kind of pass this questionnaire was to answer false on all of these. So the question is now, how did the poor psychology students, uh, scientists at this university that didn't teach methods and professors and teachers that did teach uh, methodology, how well did they do on this questionnaire? Well, uh, the students unfortunately did poorly. All of the students made some mistake. They answered true. In, in on one of these statements in this questionnaire. So, so they didn't make it, none of them. Uh, the scientists uh, didn't do much better. 90% uh, of them uh, failed the questionnaire. And even the methodology instructors and professors that, that should know better because they're probably teaching these things uh, didn't really know what the t-test and the p-value meant. Uh, and in one sense, it's it's a bit surprising maybe, but I, I don't think it's so surprising. I, I think one problem with p-values is that there is a kind of a cognitive dissonance. There's like the distance between what researchers and students want the p-value to be and what it actually is 
that distance is so great that I think it's kind of hard to internalize what the p-value is. But there are not only students and researchers in this world. Since November, there's also a pretty decent AI. ChatGTP, it's, pretty, it's, it's an awesome AI. AI, uh, language model and chatbot. Uh, it's trained on a, on a huge corpus. Uh, Wikipedia is like just a couple of percentages of this, this corpus. It, it can correctly answer most questions that you throw at it. Uh, and in many senses, it's a pretty decent alternative to, to Wikipedia. Now, if our confused student goes to ChatGTP with questions around p-values, how well will ChatGTP do? That's what I tried to figure out. And, and uh, of course, I started with a questionnaire uh, from Halle and Kraus. So I gave it the whole questionnaire, and initially I was very impressed. Uh, on the first four statements, uh, ChatGTP answered false. But then on statement five, uh, you know, if you decide to reject the null hypothesis, the probability that you're making the wrong decision, ChatGTP answered true and confidently gave the following rationalization. If you're using a significant level of 0.01, the probability of making a type one error or falsely rejecting the null hypothesis is 0.01. ChatGTP is here completely forgetting about uh, the base rate of the, uh, the, the hypothesis being true. Uh, so unfortunately for chat DTP, it doesn't do very well on p-values. And this is the general pattern uh, when I've poked at this further. So chat DTP trained on a huge corpus. It has learned all the right things that people write and say about p-values, but unfortunately it seems like it has also learned all the wrong things that people say and write about p-values. So, so for example, if you just ask it about the definition of a p-value, it will say a lot of right things. It will say that it's uh, pro the probability of obtaining a test statistics as extreme or more extreme that, than the one observed. Correct things and so on. But it will also say nonsense like uh, there is a less than a 5% chance that the results are due to chance. Uh, now, chat GTP is, is probabilistic. If you give the same prompt, uh, it can give you different answers. Uh, and by changing this prompt a bit, I actually made ChatGTP uh, say more correct things about p-value. So for example, I had a lot of luck with the following prompt where I say that I'm a statistics professor trying to understand how I should interpret a p-value. Could you help me out? And then uh, ChatGTP actually gives me pretty decent answers. Uh, the problem is, of course, you don't always know what prompt you should go for. So if I just change this prompt a tiny bit, here, I'm a psychology student. The confused psychology students trying to understand p-values. With this prompt, I now get nonsense again. I get things like a p-value is a probability that the results occurred by chance, and so on. Uh, also, if I, for example, ask ChatGTP how I can prove uh, that two experimental groups are different, ChatGTP is readily going to recommend that I use a t-test to prove this, which, of course, this is something that you can't use a t-test to prove. I think the best example of uh, how ChatGTP has learned all the nonsense that people write about p-values is, is the following prompt. So here, ChatGTP is a list of p-values as from statistical tests and the corresponding verbal description. So we could have p less than 0.001. We could call that maybe extremely significant. We have p less than 0.01, and we could call that uh, highly significant. Please, ChatGTP, continue this list for the following uh, values of p, 0 0.05, 0 0.06, 0 0.07, and so on. So for uh, uh, p less than 0 0.05, I think it's pretty natural that ChatGTP would go for uh, just significant, and that's the case. But surely, ChatGTP, for uh, p less than 0 0.06, you would go for non-significant in this case. Sure, sure, right? No, ah, no, it's suggestive, I guess, and and then p less than 0.07 is marginally significant, and even p less than 0 0.1 is weakly significant. And it's not until we get to p less than 0.02 uh, we get something that's non-significant. So ChatGTP has learned a lot about p-values, but unfortunately, all the nonsense. So can AI save us from the perils of p-values? Well, if you look at ChatGTP, I think the answer is no. It's learned all the nonsense uh, there is about p-values on the internet, it seems. 
And and if a future AI is going to be trained on a large corpus of the internet, I think the answer is still going to be no. So, what can be done? I mean, I don't know. I I know one. I tried one thing. So I took the the the, the questionnaire from Halle and Kraus, and uh, I rewrote it so that it was about not a t-test and a p-value, but about a simple Bayesian model. Uh, that assumes the data is normally distributed with um, uninformative priors. And then you find that there is an 0.99 probability that the experimental group performs uh, substantially better than the control group. Uh, so given this premise uh, and, 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 and some statements that are also similarly modified to be about uh, a Bayesian model, ChatGTP actually gives me pretty decent answers. So, for example, for statement one, that there is a strong that there's strong evidence that there is a difference between the population means. ChatGTP, I think, correctly states that that this is true, based on the data and the Bayesian model. The probability of the experimental group performing substantially better than the control group is 0.99. Yep, and so on. So, what to make about this? ChatGTP and and, and humans tend to be fairly confused about the p-values. It it seems. Chat GTP and maybe humans also seems to be more correct about Bayesian probabilities. You make of that uh, what you will. Uh, thank you for listening to this presentation called uh, Can AI Save Us from the Paris of P-Values presented at Base at Lund in 2023. I'm Rasmus Bot and uh, thank you for listening.